All right. In this video, I want to talk about how it all comes down to this. And what this is, you'll understand by the time I get through this. So probably more to the end of this video of what I'm talking about here. And it has to do with these two salvations because of this topic. Let me tell you what the topic is because the title that it all comes down to this doesn't really tell you what the topic is. When I actually talking about the two salvations here, it doesn't quite tell you what I want to talk about here. But it has to do with this view from two groups of Christians. Both groups, I believe, are saved. But they don't agree on this point here. And that is that one group of these saved Christians believes that we are saved differently through the different dispensations of time. And it's not always by this gospel that we are actually preaching today. The gospel of our salvation, the gospel of grace. How Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again the third day according to the scriptures for our justification. But that wasn't always the case. And it won't, won't always be the case. And there's another group that I believe believe the gospel. They're saved, but they believe that Throughout time, everybody's saved the same way. And I think that there's one key point that really shows who is right here. But in order to get to that point, I want to break some things down here. Okay? Now, before I actually focus on what's on the screen here, I want to ask you, about before mankind, when it was God and the angels, and Lucifer fell and he brought other angels with him, how were they saved? How were they lost? It's more of something just to think about, because were they, they were obviously created in a certain way, so, you know, there's grace there, right? They didn't create themselves. They didn't give themselves life and sustain their life. So there's grace there. But how did they fall? And once they fell, could they be redeemed? Something to think about there, because obviously the salvation there is different, right? Because when we read John chapter 3, Jesus says that you have to be born of water and of the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. So we see that Jesus is telling us that what he continues to say, that the flesh is born of the flesh and the Spirit is born of the Spirit, that only those who are born of the flesh by the water of the mother's womb can actually be born again of the Spirit. So it's basically showing you that these fallen angels can't be born again. So there seems to be something different there, right? They're not saved in the same way we are. I'm not even sure if they can be saved at all, right? So there's obviously two salvations just with that alone, right? But what I have here on the screen, what I want to get into now, is actually the two salvations of man. And you may be thinking, what? What are you talking about? And it's like, yes, there's two salvations of man. You see, we have, let me change the color I'm using here. On Here on the, your left, we have the salvation of the soul, where once you are born again, you are one spirit with the Lord, like we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Those joined unto the Lord are one spirit. You've been circumcised from the flesh, as in your soul has been removed from it. Kind of like a C-section, because the flesh is like the, uh, the mother. And you have been saved. Right? But it's not your flesh that's saved. It's the soul being joined onto the spirit of God. And you're part of the kingdom of God. 
the kingdom of God that is within you. It does not come by sight. Flesh and blood does not inherit it. And then over here on your right, we have flesh and soul as well. Because in the Old Testament, we see flesh and soul are intertwined and connected because there isn't that circumcision from the flesh in the Old Testament. There's a shadow of it with physical circumcision. And the flesh is not saved by the gospel. Right? The, it, in order to save your flesh, you have to keep the law. Right? You have to not sin. You have to do the religious rituals. You have to do the good works for God and your fellow man. And if you fail to do that, you have to offer up the sacrifices. Right? So, if you have somebody here, and this is going to represent their, their flesh here, This person is obviously soul and body, right? They're, they're alive there. They accept this, but then they don't want to keep the law, or in the other words, like the Ten Commandments, right? They don't want to be morally upright. They want to just live in sin because they know their soul is saved. Well, then the body, uh, it dies. Right, we see this in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We see this acted out in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1-5, through 5, where there's a Christian fella right, who was doing just what I'm saying here. He was sleeping with his stepmother. And... Paul says to give him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, Romans 6, 23, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So if that person truly believed and was born again, he's over here. You know, we'll put his little spirit body over here. He's saved, right? Yet his body, because of sin, even though he might have been young, he's given over to Satan, and now he is uh, pushing up daisies here in the physical body, right? And so why am I bringing this up here? Because you see, you need to understand that there's two salvations. So when you're reading about salvation and how to be saved you need to take it into context is it talking about the salvation of your flesh or the salvation of your soul because the salvation of your soul is not determined by you keeping the law your good works you truly loving god and loving your fellow man that's not how your soul is saved it's about just simply having faith in God and his love for you and his work. Believing and trusting in God and his word. By doing this, your soul is saved in spite of what's going on in the flesh. Right? So, it, that's why salvation is called a free gift. Right? It's grace. It's, it's not something you earn to deserve. Yet, there's times where if you don't keep the law, you don't do something your flesh is going to die, such as an example would be Noah. If he didn't build the ark, he would have drowned in the flood along with his family. The f his flesh would have been wiped out. His soul saved? I would say yes. But, can't say for sure, right? I would say so. But his flesh definitely wouldn't have been saved because he didn't build the ark, right? So you see, if there's two salvation. If you want to save your flesh, which a lot of people, that's what they focus on, the flesh. So what do they focus on? They focus on the law, right? It, I'll show you, I'll illustrate this in another way. Over here is the tree of life. 
And we'll try to make this look more like a cross because the fruit on this tree oh, is actually Jesus is offering to us his life right here. Right? We're doing green to represent not only the leafy green, but the emerald throne. And I wanted to use a different color over here. So that's the tree of life. But this isn't going to save your flesh because there's a lot of people who have eaten from the tree of life and they've died. Right? Because this doesn't save your flesh, it saves your soul. But over here, we have the God of this world. So there's rules and regulations set up. You see, mankind has eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil over here. And doesn't really have any fruit. At least fruit that we would consider good fruit. I know it may look nice. You know, got some nice flowers. But it doesn't have any real edible, useful fruit, except for self-righteousness and what have you, right? But anyway, over here on this side, this is Satan's kingdom in the flesh, right? You want to save the flesh, you have to abide by the rules from when Adam fell. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is the law, right? In order to save your flesh, you have to keep the Ten Commandments. We'll just sum up the law with the Ten Commandments here. 10C here. That's what that's supposed to be anyway. You're under this jurisdiction. So if your flesh does not keep up with this, not only are you not blessed, but now you are cursed. Possibly to the point of death, right? So if you want to make it in this world, this is Satan's world. You have to abide by the law. And the reason why he wants you under this law is so that he can always condemn you. You're always guilty. Because you have to keep it perfectly, right? And you're not actually doing so. So all you end up really getting since you're not actually righteous, you, but you start to think you are, is you get this black fruit of self-righteousness over here. But you see, you're saving your flesh, but you're not saving your soul. Right? And the point being here is that a lot of times in the Old Testament, when you go back and you say, okay, this is a different dispensation, they're under the law of Moses. Yes, this is true. It's a different dispensation. The Old Covenant dispensation. We're in the New Covenant. Or the New Testament. And we're not under that law. Because we died here. We've already died through Jesus Christ here. So we are no longer under Satan's jurisdiction. Because we are dead we are under the kingdom of God's jurisdiction. That's why Jesus said to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, my servants would fight for me. Right? Because this is Satan's world. This is Satan's kingdom. Right? So you need to differentiate the two salvations, the salvation of the flesh or the spirit. And that's what this all ends up coming down to. As you see, ultimately... There's going to be a time where the church is raptured and gone. Those who have been born again, that are in this little bubble over here, they've accepted their condemnation to death and hell, and God saved them by giving them his life. Right? They're partaking from the tree of life by letting the flesh die. Right? But there's a lot of people who don't want to die. They want to save this life. They like this life in this world, in the flesh. And they want to save this. Right? So they, they stay under this law here. 
Now, are we saved in the same way throughout time? Sometimes it appears like this, right? When we look at Adam and Eve, and they were na uh, naked, but they didn't know it because they obviously had some kind of clothing that was given by God, like righteousness, uh, uh, some kind of light. His spirit was covering them. Because when they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they died spiritually. They lost the spirit of God. They weren't covered by his righteousness. They saw that they themselves were naked. They had no righteousness. So you can see that they were saved by grace. Because even after that, God actually slew the lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, to clothe them with the lamb skin. Right? Give them clothes that are better than the fig leaves, the self-righteousness. Because the self-righteousness always rots. You've always got to try to replace it and fix it because you always fail. Right? you always got to start over constantly. But you see that they're clothed just like Jacob, clothed with the lambskin, appear to be the older brother. Right? And we get clothed with God's righteousness when we're saved as Christians. Right? Abraham deemed righteous. Genesis 15, by believing God, not by his, any of his works, right? So it seems like, hey, we're all saved that, that same way when it comes to the at least the spirit of the soul, right? Yet there's this one issue that we finally get to. Where's my cursor here? All right. And that is, now, I'm going to draw a couple of people here. We'll draw them in red to represent the flesh. And this is when the rapture happens, the church is gone. And then Satan, he wants you to bow to him and accept the mark of the beast and here's the issue here you notice how I put soul here and I also put the soul here and that's because your soul is attached to the flesh until you put the flesh to death at the cross and that's when you're spiritually circumcised and cut from the flesh and this is kind of like your flesh is your mother the womb for your soul and you need to be born, right? And if you're not born, well, you're going to end up being like a miscarriage. You're going to die in the womb. And the uh, woman is going to just flush out the soul, you know, the, the, the dead infant, or it's going to reabsorb it into the body, right? So there needs to be a birth. And... There has to be a C-section in this sense because there's issues going on here with all of us. And until you are born again, that soul is attached to that flesh. So over here, we got two people after the church is gone, after the rapture, and then there's the mark of the beast. You need to bow down to the, to the image of the beast and you need to take his mark. Right now, here's where there's a point where I think clears everything up. When you are born again, over here on this side, you are sealed, and this is also marked. You're marked by God with the Holy Spirit. You're saved. Right? When you take the mark of the beast, it's quite similar in that when you are born again and you're sealed and marked by the Holy Spirit, you can't be lost. You're saved. No matter what. Right? But when you take the mark of the beast, it's the opposite. You can't be saved because what you're doing is you're sealing 
let's say this person says no I don't want it this person says yes they get sealed into the flesh because you see they want to save the flesh they don't want the flesh to die and the mark of the beast is going to give them the false promise of keeping that flesh alive forever right they don't want their life to end they want the pleasures of the flesh and the enjoyment of the flesh they like their life in the flesh and they think they're good and they don't deserve to die they want that mark of the beast because they don't want to die they seal the soul into the flesh so that the soul will now die with the flesh and suffer with the flesh and pay for their own sins they'll die in their sins because they have never believed and been circumcised from the flesh that's why jesus says unless you believe you will die in your sins right your soul will be stuck to that flesh and you can't be saved now you've made your choice and you're not going to have an excuse because we have everybody preaching about this now you can go read the bible yourself and read through revelation and see this for yourself revelation 14 is where i would bring you to right now and you look at the three angels messages as there's three angels that are going to be preaching over the earth talking about the, go the everlasting gospel which you can see is a different gospel than what paul preached from first corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 has nothing to do with jesus and him dying for your sins raising again the third day according to the scriptures for your justification and it has to do with you worshiping god which means you don't take this mark right because it goes on to say babylon has fallen has fallen probably having to do with satan falling from heaven with his angels and then they're going to be cast down to hell i'm sure there's other meanings to it and then there's a third message that says hey whoever takes the mark of the beast is damned Right? Because instead of accepting God's grace right now and accepting the seal and mark of God, you've rejected that. And then when Satan came and offered his mark to be sealed to him, you didn't reject it. So you had a second chance, but you, you rejected God and then you just accepted Satan. Right? So you're you damn you're damned. So you see that we're not saved in the same way. Because you see, if how do I draw your attention to this? This guy here, if he wasn't raptured and he didn't die, right? He's still alive. And he is over here. Let's let's draw him. Let's draw him in blue to show that he's a believer over here. Let's say he wasn't raptured. Right? He's sealed and marked by God. So he can't be lost. How can he end up taking this mark? And then he's sealed into the flesh, reversing his spiritual circumcision and trapping his soul to the flesh. And now he's satan how how is how can that happen how can he not be lost but also not be saved you see how it's contradicting these two groups of people can't exist at the same time you can't be saved in the same way at the same time during this mark of the beast and that's what i always bring up to people who get upset that they say, oh you're saved in different ways well are the angels saved the same way and then i bring up can you take the mark of the beast and still be saved because they don't want to say yes you can so they get confused and they don't know what to say because they don't want to say you're saved differently because they want to say you're saved by grace through faith which means you can take the mark of the beast and that means you're actually leading people to think it's okay to take it which means you're leading people to hell you know when i say hey you're saved in a different way through different dispensations who am i leading to hell who when I say, hey, you're saved by grace right now, who am I leading to hell? Nobody. But when the rapture happens, I say, hey, you need to re resist taking the mark of the beast or you'll be damned. Who am I leading to hell with that? Nobody.
But when you tell people, hey, you're saved by grace through faith, even during the time of Jacob's trouble, there's a great tribulation that come, that's going to come upon us where we have the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the idle shepherd showing up and giving out the mark of the beast where you can't buy or sell or go about your life without it. Hey, well, if you're saved by grace through faith, you can take it. But if you take it, you're damned. So you, these people have an issue there. Like, how is this possible? And the, the obvious solution to this is that the dispensation has changed. The opportunity to accept God's grace that he offers through Jesus Christ on the cross has ended. So this can't happen. This person in the blue won't even be there. So that this person here who rejects the mark of the beast, they might end up being martyred, so they still die in the flesh, right? They still let the flesh die because they might be something like a beheading. So they still end up putting the flesh to death so the soul is saved, right? But then there might be, let's put another fellow over here. There'll be another fellow here, and he also rejects the mark of the beast because he's around during this time. But he makes it all the way to the return of Jesus. So let's put that there. Return of Jesus. Well, because he rejected the mark of the beast, he was protected probably because he also kept the law here to the best of his ability. And he was protected all the way to the end. He probably supported the Jews in Israel instead of fighting against them. So he's protected all the way through, or she, and they save the flesh. Right? It's not necessarily that their soul is saved, because now they go into the millennial kingdom here, because Jesus will then reign for a thousand years. And that person might actually live for the entire thousand years. But during that time, they potentially could be cast into hell. This is when Jesus is going to rule with a rod of iron. And let's say they live all the way through this thousand years. Well, at the, when Jesus returns, we'll, you, we'll use this tree over here to symbolize Satan. He's cast down into hell. He's chained up there, right? And then he's let out at the end here. So at the end of this thousand years, he's back. And what does he do? He deceives the nations. So then when he comes back, this guy might not like how Jesus ran the world for a thousand years. So he follows Satan's deception here. And then he ends up fighting against Jesus at the end. And then ultimately gets destroyed with all the people who were deceived. When Satan is let loose. So this person, even though they resisted the mark of the beast, they made it to the end of the tribulation, they live through the millennial reign, still not saved. Because you see, there is a part here where it has to do with works. Right now, Praise God, we're under this dispensation of grace. Not that there's not grace in other dispensations, because a lot of people seem to think that. Just like when you say, oh, the Holy Spirit's going to be lifted at the rapture. It's not as if the Holy Spirit isn't around. What is being said here is that the Holy Spirit is not indwelling in anybody. Right now, it's indwelling in the, in the church, the true believers. But when they are raptured, it's not dwelling in anybody anymore. And it's not going to restrain anybody anymore. Right? It's still there. And in the same way, right now we're in a dispensation of grace. Not that there's not grace in any other time. It's just that's not the focal point. Right? You may be given grace as in you given an opportunity to 
let's say, hear from God. And he's going to use you during this time of great tribulation. But you reject it. Well, you see, you were given grace. You didn't deserve that opportunity. But then you also rejected it. Right? By your own free will. So now, you, you know, you lose out because you rejected it. So you see, there is grace, but there also would be works. Like Noah received grace because of his genealogy. Just like the 144,000. They received grace not because they accepted the gospel, but because they're part of the Jewish family. They didn't choose that. That's obviously grace, right? They, they didn't choose their birth. They didn't create themselves. So that's grace. It's like Noah, found perfect in his generations. He was the only one or family there that wasn't polluted with the fallen angels and all the mixing that was going on at that time. So he, he was taken. But if he decided not to build the ark, then what? So he, you see, he received grace, received a message from God, build this ark. But then he could still say no. All right? So you see, there's grace there, but he's not saved purely by the grace. Because the grace is more of a, hey, a message that you can accept or reject. Just like now, you have the message of the gospel. Right? You can accept that. And then you're saved, or you can reject it. And then, you know, you're under this tree over here, and there's now works. And I put XXX because that's like 666 there. It's, you know, poison, it's perversion. You're under this one here. You chose the flesh over the spirit. And uh, you, you kind of see this also, uh, so I'll wrap this up, I'm going to start rambling about stuff now, is that the flesh over here is the, the physical, the female, the spirit is the, the male, the spirit enters into the female, such as God created man out of the dust of the earth, he created the physical body, the female, the spirit entered into the body. Just like a man enters into the woman and then there's a birth. That's when man became a living soul. The soul is like the child. And you are the soul. You're the child of the spirit and the flesh. Right? And there's basically a divorce going on here between the spirit and the flesh because of sin. And you have to choose, do I stay with my mother or do I go with my father? And we're in one of those situations where the mother is the one that actually sinned against the father and is an adulteress. And now the flesh is just saying all these bad things about the father, right? Like you have some of these mothers do. They get split up because the father's not going to put up with their their ways. And then the mother then bad most the father to the child. Now you have a choice there. Do you, you, I know you love your mother, but do you love her to the point where you're just going to accept her lies in her obvious, evil, selfish, manipulative ways and then reject your father who actually truly loves you and wants to reach out to you, wants a relationship with you, but your mother is trying to intercept that and not allow that to happen because it's going to expose the truth about her. And she's afraid that you're not going to love her anymore and all that, that she's going to lose you. So that's why she has to lie and do all these things. So what, what's your choice? And like you see with a lot of these families, a lot of the children, a lot of times they choose the mother over here. And they listen to the lies of the mom. You know, sometimes, yes, the fathers are dirtbags. It's the other way around. But in this situation, when it comes to God and our flesh and the world, God's the good guy. And we, the flesh and the world, are the adulterous wife, mother, that 
we, our own flesh, will badmouth God to our soul to try to get us to sin and to reject God and do all these things. So you got that choice to make. Who, who are you going to follow? Yeah, I know you love your mother, you love your flesh. But you know she's crazy, and she's a liar, and a manipulator, and is selfish. You got to make that choice. Because if you, you choose the flesh, your, and your mother in this instance, well, you'll perish with her. And that's just how it is. You can say, oh, this, this life's not fair and all this. Well, that's how it is. Deal with it. You can complain about it all you want. It ain't going to change anything. That's your choice. You're going to choose the flesh and complain that it's not fair. Well, I've gone complaining all your way to hell. You can't say you don't, you don't deserve it by... The choice you made, you chose the lying manipulation over the truth. So, with all that being said, I hope I made everything clear. At least to the best of my ability here. Maybe as I digest this a little bit better and go over it a bit more, while talking to God about it, maybe I will do this again. And in a clearer way or looking at it from a different angle but this is basically we have two salvations of the flesh and of the spirit and just because you save the flesh doesn't mean you save the spirit and just because you save the spirit doesn't mean you save the flesh right it's two different kingdoms two different worlds and in this instance it's kind of like you have God as the, your father here and over here, over here, put a dot here so you know what I'm talking about. Over here on the left, you, God, you have as his father. And over here, you have Satan as your mother. This is Lucifer. Lucifer is your mother over here on the right. And a lot of people, they want to save the flesh. They want to stick with mama. Mama's boy. And they don't like that how dad is treating mom, even though mom obviously deserves it. You want to protect your mom. All right. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Take care.